This is the version 2 ELR bipod from Tier 1. Debuted this year at the 2024 British Shooting Show and ever since seeing it there I've been patiently waiting to get my hands on one to do this review. And I must say I've got to give props to Tier 1 straight from the bat because a lot of the problems that they had uh, with, or I say a lot of the problems, the couple of problems they had with the uh, Generation 1 ELR and its younger brother, the ATAC bipod, um, the problems that they had with those bipods, uh, which I fed back in my ATAC review, uh, which you'll see up there, um, they have remedied in the version two ELR. So props to tier one, they really are listening to their customer base and making improvements on their products as and when they release them. Um, so we'll cover those as we go through the review from top to bottom. So we'll start with the mounts. Mounts are available in Arca pan and tilt, Picatinny pan and tilt, and Picatinny tilt only. Coming down from there is immediately where the first change uh, in design has been made by tier one. And I think that probably addresses one of the problems that I identified with the ATAC and lesser degree, the uh, generation one ELR. Uh, previously, the mount was to the rear of the main body of the bipod. So it extended the bipod out forward of the mounting system. So if you wanted to, you could put your mount right at the end of your arc or Picatinny rail and the bipod would extend out another five, six centimeters beyond that, just giving you that extra long wheelbase to give you a bit more stability when you're shooting, particularly from the prone position. Uh, now, I think they've removed that to address the issue of the nut at the back for the tension uh, on the tilt uh, being loosened if you tilted it counterclockwise. So if you set up, tightened the, the thumb screw that came as standard on the version 1 ELR and the version 1 ATAC, tightened up that tilt and then tilted your rifle counterclockwise, straightened it back up again counterclockwise, strain it back up again. Every time you tilted it, it would gradually loosen the nut, loosen the nut, loosen the nut until the tension came completely off and the rifle uh, would just be loose on, the, or the, the mount would just be loose on top and you'd have no uh, built-in tension on the tilt. But with this version, that is completely gone. You tighten it up using the now included podlock, which was another thing that I mentioned with the ATAC is that the thumb nut, you simply couldn't put enough pressure on it. You had to get the tier one um, pod lock or the, uh, I can't remember what they called it, but they basically had like a little uh, handle that attached to the, the thumb nut that you could uh, ratchet on some tension. Um, this, as standard, game changer. Um, not that I think you necessarily need it because I haven't had any of the issues with it loosening off. But definitely, this is much better, I think, um, for applying that tension to the, the tilt control of the back here. Coming down slightly more, as per the version 1 and the eight, uh, version 1 ELR and the ATAC, you have adjustable splay uh, of the legs from these two buttons here. Now, they lock out into 120 degrees, uh, the sort of standard bipod position in 60 degrees, as well as in 90 degrees. Now I can't say I'd ever use the 90 degree position with both legs, but the legs are of course independently adjustable. So you probably could find uh, that if you couldn't get enough height on your bipod in the standard 60 degree position, you could adjust one leg to the 90 degree using the tilt, straighten out the, um, the bipod and you'd get some extra height out of it that way. Uh, but other than that, I don't think you'd necessarily use the 90 degree position on both legs. Uh, but as I say, they are independently uh, adjustable. Now, this is probably the one flaw that I'd say that ELR has um, or backward step from the Generation 1 ELR. And that is that they've adopted these small buttons here that you see on the ATAC as well. Um, the Generation 1 had sort of the same size um rods if you like going into uh, the the mechanism to adjust the splay but they had a larger paddle uh, on the back so that you could a more easily press them uh, and b they were just a bit bigger this it feels a bit not spongy uh, spongy probably is the word they're, they're, they're obviously spring loaded but because you're pushing on quite a small item uh, quite a, a small surface area it feels quite awkward sometimes to to push it in um, and get enough on it 
to, to lock it back in place. Um, but they still function. Um, they're still perfectly usable. But I think they probably were just a little bit better uh, when they had the larger paddles at the rear. Now, one of the other changes they've made is that the uh, splay um, mechanism, if you like, is now fully encased within the body of the bipod. Uh, so it reduces the chance of you getting any dust or grit, uh, sand, mud, etc. in that and stopping it from functioning. And even if you did, uh, there's still a very small gap that you'd be able to get in there with some sort of air dust or something and just blow it out. Uh, and that wouldn't cause you any issues. Uh, coming forward, uh, as expect from most bipods these days, it has the stowed forward position. You can adjust it down to what is approximately a 45 degree position, um, albeit I believe Tier 1's website says it's 47 degrees. Um, so 47 degree position and of course the standard 90 degree position uh, there. Uh, that is all adjusted using these buttons here at the top of the legs, which are nice and solid, spring-loaded, uh, really easy to get your, your hands onto. And of course, they are all designed differently, the buttons. So you know, even if it's in the dark, um, you can feel what button you're, you're reaching for and pressing. Now, coming down to the legs, the legs are slightly beefier than the uh, version 1 ELR, or at least they appear to be slightly beefier. Uh, they are also wrapped in carbon fibre sleeves, I believe to reduce a little bit of the weight. Um, and they've still got the uh, button as carried over from the Generation 1 ELR and the ATAC. A lot of similarity in that uh, with this little extended paddle at the end just allowing you to get enough leverage so that you can silently deploy the bipod um, or you can just rapidly extend the legs by pulling on them. Um, the legs themselves will adjust to, uh, well, let's get this out. Tier 1 have helpfully provided some spec sheets uh, for the lengths. So in the 90 degree position, uh, you will have a maximum height from the mount down to the bottom of the leg. And these specifications are based on having the claw um, or the spike feet. Uh, which is 363 millimetres with the maximum extension uh, or down to 275 with the minimum leg extension. Uh, coming out to the 60 degree position, uh, we have a maximum length of 314 millimetres and a minimum length of 270 millimetres. And finally, in the 120 degree position, we have a maximum of 195 millimetres and a minimum of 150 millimetres. Uh, coming down to the bottom of the legs, we have a small detent here, which can be pushed in with a bullet tip or a tool, and the legs just pop, uh, the feet just pop off. These are the rubber feet that come as standard. There are optional spike feet, uh, which can be purchased either as a package with the bipod or separately after the fact. Uh, the only other upgrade that they've had on this, uh, which is the, um, here it is, nice little gap screwed drilled and tapped for a barricade stop which can be positioned to face forward or rearwards uh, that i haven't got uh, but it is available again like i say with uh, the spike feet you can buy it as a package with the bipod or you can buy it after the fact uh, as an aftermarket add-on now the bipod weighs in uh, with the spiked feet and the barricade stop at 706 grams which isn't particularly light for a bipod, but certainly uh, compared to the, the competition uh, where you compare it directly uh, to other bipods with similar feature sets, it is still relatively lightweight. Um, and obviously, if you're not running the barricade stop and you're running the rubber feet, there will be a, a slight weight saving there. Um, also, the Picatinny mount um, may add or reduce a little bit of that weight. Now, when it comes to pricing for these, uh, this is where I think Tier 1 will start doing very well uh, in the market because for this setup as it is here with the standard rubber feet um, in any of the mounting options available without the barricade stop, it is £500 including tax. Um, now, that sounds quite expensive for a bipod, but again, when you compare it to uh, any other bipod on the market with similar feature set, um, particularly the, the MDT Skypod, which is sort of 
the king for PRS bipods. Um, this comes in significantly cheaper, about £230 cheaper for the standard Skypod model, um, which has all the same features. Now, if you wanted the spike feet um, and you included them when you purchased them, it would take it to £550. I think if you're purchasing them separately, they're £50.99. pence. Um, so like barely any difference from buying them um, as a set or individually. Obviously, you might have to pay uh, additional postage. Um, likewise, with the barricade stop, the barricade stop comes in at £50 extra if you included it with the bipod. So £550 with the feet, £600 with the barricade stop. Um, or £550 if you didn't want the, the spiked feet uh, and just wanted the barricade stop. There's an uprated pod lock available, which is a metal pod lock, um, which I think is about £20, £25. But to be fair, I think the plastic one is perfectly good enough on this version. I haven't found any sort of bending or warping issues um, with me trying to apply tension. So overall, uh, I think the Tier 1 ELR version 2 bipod is an incredibly good bipod. Uh, super versatile. Uh, perfect for PRS, ELR, NRL type competitions uh, and it may even just uh, overthrow uh, the MDT Skypod as the king of that sort of bipod given that this comes in at a cheaper price. Um, honestly I can't find fault with it at the moment the only problem that I personally would like would be the larger paddles at the back of these um, these buttons here just to make them a little bit easier to press but aside from that this is a superb solidly built no no wobble no slop um, perfectly rigid bipod and I can't wait to get out in July where I'm shooting the next PRS UK match uh, to use it so until then take care